Legion to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I haven't heard that many voices in a long time in this chamber, in unison. Clerk will call the roll, please. Mayor Jablin? Here. Vice Mayor Levy? Here. Council Member Russo? Here. Council Member Primoroso? Here. Council Member Tinsley? Here. Any additions, uh, deletions, or modifications? There are none? No, sir. Uh, announcements and presentations? The 9 11 Remembrance SA recipients? I'm going to come down and give some certificates, and then I'm going to ask the Council to come down and take a picture. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Tom Murphy, President of the Palm Beach Gardens Police Foundation. As many of you are aware, our foundation partnered over the summer with the Palm Beach Gardens Fire Rescue as well as with the Fire Chiefs Association of Palm Beach County to put together an essay contest to remember the 9-11 events and to present those awards as part of the 9-11 County Remembrance, which will be held tomorrow night at Christ Fellowship. Tonight we'll be naming the, and awarding the prizes to those individuals who, whose essay was considered amongst the best amongst the best. But before the Chief Southern comes up and gives the presentation and gives the awards, we thought we'd like to spend a few moments to talk about those who worked very hard on making this event happen, and hopefully will work with us next year and ongoing years to make this happen in the future. As I said, the Police Foundation was in partnership with Palm Beach Gardens Fire Rescue and the Chiefs Association, but also working very closely with us was the Community Involvement Unit of the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department, as well as the Firefighters to the Rescue, the foundation of, of the fire organization. We're also very grateful to the WPBF TV Channel 25, as well as to the Palm Beach Post, who worked with us closely in publicizing the essay contest. As you may know, we started this contest after the school year had started, so it was very important we get some outside help in making sure people understood and knew that the contest was taking place. When it came time to judge the awards and judge the essays, we put together a committee of some very influential people who, went, who ran through the essays, read through them all, and understood them, and selected those in a sequence and a priority. The jury was made up of Chief Daniel Connor, who was the chief of the Delray Beach Police Department, representing the Palm Beach, Gardens, Palm Beach County Chiefs Association. Mr. Jim McCartan, who is the general manager of the Gardens Mall, representing the Police Foundation. And Lieutenant Jason O'Brien of Palm Beach Gardens Fire Rescue, represented fire, Palm Beach Gardens Fire Rescue. In addition, we brought in two additional people to help us with the judging of the contest. The first was a lady named Sarah Peters, who I know you all know is with the Palm Beach Post, and also a lady by the name of Stephanie Berzinski, who again you know was, with, was an on-camera representative of, PBF, of WPBF Channel 25. Stephanie had a specific interest, and a, a, a interest in this overall event because her father, in fact, was a survivor of the 9-11 tower collapse. These individuals met and eventually selected the young adults who will be honored here tonight and again tomorrow night at the 9-11 Memorial Celebration at Christ Fellowship Church. And, of course, there are many other individuals who I haven't named who are very important in making this event happen, and we are all, of course, very hopeful that this essay conference will continue in the years to come as we start to recognize that the youth of the country, most all of them high school and below, were born after the 9-11 event. So with that said, let me turn the podium over to Chief Southern, who will name the awardees and make the presentations of their awards. For the record, Michael Southern, Fire Chief, Palm Beach Gardens. The Fire and Police Services 14 years ago, I can't believe it's been 14, but 14 years ago made a commitment that we would never forget. And in doing so, we were concerned that the, our youth would understand what happened on that tragic day. A lot of these children were born or they were too young to understand at that time when 415 lives were taken just from the first responders, police, fire, and so forth. So what we tried to do was put this essay contest together and in hopes that we could carry this on so when folks like us retire and uh, the older ones kind of go out and the newer ones come in that the youth will carry this on and that it will be in the history books, in the school books, and so forth that they do. Before I go any further, I would like to recognize the people that really put this together on the committee. And the first gentleman you saw was Tom Murphy, the president of the Palm Beach Gardens Police Foundation, but also police sergeant uh, with our city, Paul Rogers, special projects uh, fire rescue coordinator, Eileen Stevenson, and retired fire captain, Steen Erickson, who is also a member of our city's Citizens Mobile Patrol, CMP. The essay contest, which was open to our local youth, were asked to write anywhere from 500 to 700 words, and how it affected them or the nation as a whole. They had their choice. It was kind of opened up. Um, as, they, as they 
uh, as they responded to it, we were very impressed with the type of essays that, that they were actually doing. At this time, I'd like to have the mayor come up, and I'm going to call the three recipients up, first place being Mr. Uh, Brandon Gito, from, he's a freshman at Jupiter Christian School.
want to recognize Hal Valache, our commissioner. Uh, he's in the audience. Hal, if you want to just say hi. Um, we have one other presentation, Senator Joseph Abruzzo's legislative, legislative update, but unfortunately, um, uh, uh, Senator Brusso couldn't make it. He had some family uh, commitments, and so he called and told us uh, he'll be here at another meeting. Uh, thank you, though, to Senator Brusso for doing that. Um, items of resident, resident interest and board committee reports. Uh, David, you want to start? Certainly. I attended the executive board meeting for the League of Cities. And uh, looking here, we made appointments to the Advisory Boundary Committee, which was um, Commissioner Biggs of, I believe, uh, Magonia Park. Went over the financials, which are looking pretty good. We had two new associate members, uh, Jones, Edwin, and uh, Associates, which is an engineering company. And then the 211 uh, group, which is a hotline for, I think, their main thing is suicide prevention, but it's also just if you need somebody to talk to, you dial 211 and you get a sympathetic uh, person on the end of the line that will help you sort through problems. Uh, we also are changing the bylaws. They're very minor changes. If you're interested, I'll go over the, with you uh, later. Um, we've made some modifications to the Commission on Ethics Ordinance, you know, approve that, which the county wanted. Uh, we also discussed the Human Trafficking Ordinance that the county is coming up with and the Home Givers Ordinance, which is also something the county is doing, and another ordinance that's called curb uh, stoning. Um, we had a legislative committee update, which I wish Senator Bruzzo was here. I've got this for him next meeting, you know, to talk about, you know, some of the various things that the league is interested in dealing with, uh, you know, home rule. And that is pretty much it. Our next meeting is at the Sequesta Country Club, which I normally wouldn't mention. It's September 30th. Of course, it's open to the public, but because it's limited, you actually have to make a reservation to go to this one. But it's real close by, and the Sequesta Country Club is a wonderful place, even if it's not in Palm Beach Gardens. Thanks, David. Uh, Marcy? Sure. Um, first, I would like to uh, wish all of my colleagues on the council a happy new year. Let's shana tova. Um, also, wish the same to our Jewish residents and uh, friends. Uh, several staff members, Bert, David, and I, attended the Chamber's legislative updates um, recently, and it was very well attended, very interesting. Um, just a very quick update on that. Uh, representative representative um, Magar spoke about 11% increase in our sales for the state. Um, Senator Joe Negron discussed uh, the tourism at $54.1 million uh, for our tourism this year. Um, Senator Clemens talked about the sober home legislat uh, legislation that passed and also talked about uh, future legislation that he's looking forward to passing in the future in regards to that because we still have some work to do um, in regards to sober home legislation. Um, Senator Abruzzo talked about uh, his Competitive Workforce Act that he's working on. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the update of that. Um, one thing that was discussed there, uh, the chamber asked if we have or if we can appoint someone for to their chamber, the Government Affairs Committee. I know we have the Economic Development uh, Committee that we're the two of us are on, but he was at, or they were asking if we can appoint someone. So maybe we can talk about that in the, at a future date, okay. um, but just to think about that. Okay. And uh, Treasure Coast meeting was canceled this past month, but the next one is going to be on the 24th. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, the 18th. Of this Summer month. schedule, everybody's doing yeah. the same thing. Correct. Thanks. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Joe? Well, I'm glad you had something to report this month. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. <laughs> I happened to miss the one meeting, and I heard your comment that she had nothing to report or shop. <laughs> I almost fell over. So that was <laughs> so, four years. Four years, yes. <laughs> uh, I also would like to wish every uh, one of our Jewish friends and neighbors a Shona Tava. A Shona Tava. I'm getting there, right? Yeah, sure. In my language, Happy New Year, I guess. <laughs> but um, that's going to be great for everyone on Monday and Tuesday, right? Start Sunday night, sundown. Monday. 
Um, I don't know if everybody knows, but um, the uh, Ed McEnroe, the long-term um, tournament director of the Honda Classic, has uh, left the Honda Classic to take a position with the PGA Tour. Unfortunately, that is a big loss for us. But the reason why we lost him, because it is, that's how good he is. Um, and it's something he's always wanted to go up a little further, and he feels that this is going to be a, a good position for him. So he's, he left, I guess, effective July. But the staff is still there. Ken Kennerly is assuming a bigger role. And um, I have the full amount of confidence that this uh, tournament will be as good as all of them in the past, if not better. So they'll be able to handle it. But I just want everybody to know, and I gave a big thank you for, for on behalf of the city, Dad, uh, because he really did a great job with the tournament. Unfortunately, he's going to be missed, but he's still around for us to call if we need him for anything, and uh, I wish him the best of luck with that. I also wanted to bring something up to the council, and it has a little bit to do with the budget, but not a lot. You know, many cities and so forth are now looking at their pension um, estimates of earnings, uh, and of course, we all know what's happened to the stock market in the past six or seven months, and many of them are lowering that. And, of course, when you do that, it involves a larger contribution, which I think we might be having a look at in the future. So I just wanted to make everyone aware that going into this budget discussion we're going to have here tonight and so forth, uh, you know, as great as we think everybody, everything is, it's not so great in that this year the stock market ha has been challenged. It has not increased as it normally would, and therefore we may have bigger pension contributions to make. But... As you all know, that's my biggest concern always, is to make sure that there's enough pension dollars for the men and women of all the city that, uh, that, that hard, work so hard to make the city what it is. Uh, and I believe that that's the best benefit they get is the pension. So I just wanted to pass that along. And Bert? I uh, just one event I want to talk about. On September 24th, the PGA Corridor is going to have an event at the Marriott. And they're going to have three speakers talking about economic development and what's happening in the corridor in North County. Um, Al Ferris will be there. He's the director of real estate for the Forbes companies. Jordan Paul, who's the CEO of Marion Hunter Cogman Real Estate. And then Ken Kennerly is going to be there from the Honda Classic talking about the Honda Classic um, and how it affects uh, our city and pretty much the whole county, um, how successful it's been over the previous uh, seven or eight years, I guess, that it's been up in this area. And I will be the moderator, so I'll try to keep it light and fun and uh, keep those guys on cue so we're not there more than an hour or so uh, talking. But I think it could be very easily those three guys talking about their experience and what's happening in North County uh, and the positive things happening in our city. So it should be a great event, probably a sold-out event. So if you're interested, go on the PGA Corridor website, and I think it's at 7.30 breakfast that it starts. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks. Um, well, of course, everyone up here has uh, wished everybody a, a happy new year. Shana um, Tova. Um, it's another year, and it's uh, uh, another year of accomplishments for Palm Beach Gardens. So uh, I'm really proud of the city, and uh, I want to wish everybody, all our Jewish friends, a, uh, including myself and those of, uh, on, the, on the dais, uh, a happy new year, um, a sweet new year. Um, the one thing I just wanted to mention was the Police Explorers Golf Tournament. Uh, Tom, when is it? Where are you, Tom? October 17th. You're not here? Okay. October 17th. Um, it's a great tournament. Uh, it's probably fully subscribed, but uh, if, uh, if you want to get another foursome, I'm sure they'll make room for you. Um, okay, that's basically all I have. Um, Next is items of resident interest. Oh, pardon me, city manager's report. I don't have a report, but I do have an announcement. I uh, would like to inform you uh, that the City of Palm Beach Gardens Procurement Department has earned the 2015 uh, Annual Achievement and Excellence in Procurement Award for the second year in a row since we've only been in an, uh, it existence for three or four years. Palm Beach Gardens is one of 26 agencies in Florida and that to receive this award, and one of 66 cities in the United States and Canada to receive this award. So I was going to ask that we have the entire department stand and be recognized for this achievement, but they, the, the entire department is already standing. <laughs> Thank you, Kumar. Thank you, Kumar.
That's it? Okay. Okay. Comments from the public? Um, we got a big crowd tonight. Uh, and um, obviously, with a big crowd comes some enthusiasm. So I would ask, please, if, um, if um, we could keep the enthusiasm to a, mod a modest level. Uh, please, no clapping, stamping, whistling, or any other um, expressions of good or bad, either side. Uh, I would appreciate that. I, it would be nice to do. Um, so well, I'm going to start with um, the, the people in the yellow shirts tonight. Um, uh, first up is uh, Eric Killam. Eric, are you here? The only one without a yellow shirt, Eric. I guess I didn't get the memo either. <laughs> All right, my name's Eric Kellum. And address? I, do I know? Name and address for the record. Eric Kellum, 235 Caravelle Drive. Thank you. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the guys in the yellow shirt, women in the yellow shirt, our fire, rescue, first responders. Um, this is my wife, Michelle. And uh, July 12th, 2011, um, I woke up at 2.36 in the morning and found her dead. And um, it was the hardest morning of my life. Uh, I'll never forget it. <clears throat> but without some of the men and women that are in here right now, she wouldn't be here right now. And uh, she had some great doctors, but without the first responders, she wouldn't have been here. We had a veteran crew that morning, and uh, it was no less than two or three minutes after a 911 call that uh, they got there and went to work. And they literally saved her life in our driveway. And um, it's kind of hard to talk about, but but it was one of, uh, you know, I, I, I can never repay these guys, these women, men, um, that showed up for us that morning. And um, to me right now, to be here, it's almost kind of unreal that we're even talking about this, but these folks are so underpaid and underappreciated, in my opinion. And... Um, you know, like I said, they save lives. They're heroes every day. They go to they go to their work, and and they they save lives. And to me, that's that's greater than anything else out there. And um, you know, we live in a county, we live in a city that is one of the wealthiest in in the state of Florida. And uh, you know, the money you you walk in these doors and you look around, and you see the the money that goes into this place in our city and the amount of taxes we pay. And I think that it's just uh, unjustified that, that the folks sitting here in the audience are, are not uh, even higher wages. And so uh, it's just um, that's why I'm here today. Not a big public speaker, um, you know, but I felt the need to come out and support this group. And, um, and that's why we're here today. Is there anything you want to say? Um, I'm Michelle Kellum. And I'm also on nothing. But um, I'm just really grateful for all of them for what they did for me. And um, I just want them to be, you know, recognized for that. And I'm glad that we had experienced people helping us. That's the thing is you get a new crop in of, of folks and new guys in, and you've got to have somebody train those guys. I mean, you, you've got the best of the best sitting right out here. And you've got to have somebody train the new crew coming in and, and to support us and help us and, and keep our community safe. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. I, I will clap for that, too, because I've been saved by, by a rescue myself. But if we could just keep it to a minimum, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Ashley Tirana. Is that right? My, okay, good. I got your name right. Name and address for the record, please. Ashley Tarana, 400 Quadrant Road. Hi, my name is Ashley Tarana. Next month I will celebrate my 10th year of service as a firefighter paramedic here in the city. I am the face of so many of our firefighters affected by our current compression issue. A starting firefighter in our city makes $49,040 a year. My equivalent base is $50,599. After nearly 10 years of experience, 
and service to this city, I make $1,599 more than a brand new firefighter. And that equates to roughly $130 more a month. I love this city and I love my job. I chose this city as the place to grow my career. When I was hired, Palm Beach Gardens was up and coming, cutting edge and the best place to work. Our equipment and vehicles are great. We train multiple times a month to hone our skills and perform at the top of our game. We take pride in being the best paramedics and firefighters in the county with the highest save rates. I, like so many of our firefighters, come to work with a smile on my face, a positive attitude, and the knowledge to make the worst day in our citizens' lives better. We are asking you to please consider taking care of the people who take such great care of you. Every day we step on those gardens' green trucks. A job at the fire department is meant to be a lifelong journey. We all grow up here. We learn from the older, experienced personnel, and we in turn teach the rookies beneath us. With that, there is a ladder to climb. With experience comes more knowledge, and the experience and knowledge is priceless when it comes to saving lives and protecting property in our community. The cost of living has continued to increase around us, yet our pay has remained below, well below surrounding fire departments. I am the face of the firefighters who would like to feel appreciated by our city and our council. I would like to see our fire department made whole again, to see a boost in morale. We weathered the storm with you during the rough years in our economy. We have given up things, and we have made sacrifices when you asked us. Our level of service is top-notch. Our save rates are well above the national average. Our response times are impressive, and you know when we show up, the caliber of our personnel is paramount. Let's work together to make our pay reflect the outstanding level of service we deliver every single day. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. All right, next is Abby Baker. Abby? Hi, my name is Abby Baker. I live at 220 Isle Verde Way in Mirabella. I wrote many of you in April, so you do know my story already. You know about my son and what happened to him when he was four years old with the uh, accident with scissors. And you know what it felt like as a mom, we talked about that, to have your hand on your son's chest and blood spurting and not be able to do anything. And to have the team that we had come into our homes and into our lives, it, it was amazing. I, I now realize, after a decade of living here, what you all have provided for us right down the road. I, I never recognized that before. I, I didn't know that most firefighters are really actually firefighter paramedics in this city. They're fire medics, as we now refer to them in my home. And I hope I have a future fire medic for this city. Um, Miles, if you see him around town, you'll recognize him because he's usually uh, wearing his bunker gear and dressed down for school. But other than that, he's on the truck and visiting the stations. Um, I wrote you about my concerns, especially regarding Marisol Station, and I feel uh, confident that the correspondence I also had with you, Vice Mayor Levy and Councilwoman Tinsley, that you are working on that problem and aware of it. And you'll hear later from my husband, Matthew Baker, um, what we didn't know was six months after my son, I'd be holding my husband as he died in our bedroom and praying that somebody would come help us again like they did before, and, and they did. Same team, through the door. And then I really realized what these people do because his situation was really complicated, and I tried to give him CPR, I tried to help him, and they came into the room, they brought the ER to us. It wasn't just a taxi ride to a hospital. It was the life-saving events happened in my bedroom at my home, and you've given that to me, and you've given me the chance to have my husband, my children to have their father, to have a happy and healthy and well-adjusted family at home. And tonight, I'm here to listen to the other stories. And tomorrow, I'm ready to get to work and let people know what I know and what I've learned over this past year. And we support you in supporting what the fire medics are asking for in staffing our stations. And I plan to move forward with my knowledge 
and talk to anyone who will listen to me and let them know what I've learned, how great we have it, and that we hope it continues. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Matt Baker. Matt Baker.
only making 1 to 2 percent higher pay than a newly hired fireman. Our 8 to 12 year veterans is drastically underpaid when compared with their peers in any other fire rescue agency. <clears throat> in 2012, the city asked us to make pension reform and abstain from raises in our last contract. Due to the economic climate at the time, we obliged the city w with both requests. This saved the city over four point, I'm sorry, $5.4 million since 2012. The members of this council praised us for those efforts. The firefighters have recently proposed a plan to adjust compression over the next three years, a plan that is a fraction of that $5.4 million cost savings. <clears throat> Sadly, the repercussions of not paying a competitive salary, salary are beginning to show. Morale is at an all-time low, and experienced personnel are starting to look elsewhere for employment. In our profession, experience on medical calls, car accidents, and fires is what saves lives. However, However, the professional fire medics of Palm Beach Gardens continue to serve the citizens to the best of their ability. <clears throat> the city continues to compare our fire medics to other Palm Beach Gardens internal departments in regards to benefits. Our firefighters and paramedics do not compare themselves with other internal departments. We compare ourselves with other fire rescue agencies in the area. And if we are not competitive, we will be unable to retain experienced employees employees that have helped form this department and to one of the pinnacle departments of the fire rescue industry. If there is one point I can leave with you, it's this. Experienced employees save, save lives, and we want to keep those experienced employees. We will only be able to do that with competitive pay and benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Um, those are all the cards I have that say fire rescue on them. There are others here that I'd like to call up, but they're not applicable to the people sitting here in yellow shirts. So can we pause for just a second? And um, let me just say a couple of things. Firstly, as most of you all know, and the residents here uh, should know, we're in negotiation with the um, Firefighters Union. Um, we're sitting down at the table with them, and we're in collective bargaining with them. So I believe for me to make any comments about, about issues would be, A, premature and inappropriate, frankly. Uh, we are, you are a collective bargaining unit, and you are uh, in good faith collective bargaining with, with our unit. And um, uh, we hear you. We understand where you're coming from. Uh, we appreciate your coming tonight and, uh, and making your, your, your feelings known to us. Uh, but again, we can't do anything up here tonight that is going to be able to satisfy your concerns at, the, at, at this very moment. So, Joe, do you want to say something? Could I just may, make a comment? I mean, I guess I've been the closest one. I mean, I guess Bert had a situation, but not here in Palm Beach Gardens. I mean, I just had probably around 60 days ago. Uh, one night we, we had an event, I think it was Frenchman's Creek, I came home and my wife wasn't feeling right and she went to bed and all of a sudden she wasn't right at all. And uh, and as you well know, like um, Mrs. Baker said, uh, you know, she called and they came out and, um, you know, it didn't matter what, I felt exactly like she did. They came out and I don't know, I don't know whether it was two or three minutes or whatever, but they were there in no time. and. And they, they did a great job. And they took my wife to the hospital, and thank God she, she was fine. And we all recognize that. You know, we're not going to all speak tonight because, again, like the mayor said, we're in contract negotiation. But we will recognize that. And I think we could, we'll all basically say we agree with everything that we've heard. Okay? We understand about compression issues. We had that with the police department. And we fixed it. And I don't know what the issue is here, but I know our city manager is working very hard to try and get this thing done. I also want to say that when I started on the council, this department was in the bottom I don't know where. Okay? And we progressed all the way up to the top three, top four, top five, and that's where we should be. And if we're not there now, then I don't know. We've got to look at it again because that's what we want. I don't want to be 
the lowest paid. I mean, I want to be the top paid, but I want to be a fair level. And if we're not, I think we're going to look at it and so forth, and that's the way this council is going to be. But I believe we're doing that. And if we are doing that, then if we're not doing that, we're going to find out shortly. But for all the residents that came in, we value this department more than anything in the world. Our police and our fire departments are our whole city. They go out and protect us. They make us feel safe. And when we have an issue, they're there to help us. I think every one of us has had an experience. You know, I, I have a summer place up in upstate New York, and I say if anything's ever going to happen to me, I pray to God it happens to me in Palm Beach Gardens. Because if it ever happened to me up there, I, you guys wouldn't see me. I mean, the level of care, the level of response time is completely different, and they really don't care. This council cares, and we will work our best to try and resolve this. I will tell you that. I don't know that we will, because as you well know, in negotiations you've got a lot of different emotion, and we're not going to talk about everything. But I, I will tell you that we're on the same page, and if we're not, then we're going to find out, because eventually this council will be making a decision, and the council will make a decision based upon facts. Not, not upon a motion. But this department, to the residents that are here, and to the department that is here, you're very important to us. And if something's got misplaced or whatever, we're going to try and fix it as best as we can. We did it with the police department, so I don't know why we can't do it with the fire department. You're just as important, and there's times when you're more important, and we appreciate that. And I just, you know, I, and I appreciate what the way everybody was tonight, you were, came in, you were orderly. We didn't have to hear a hundred different times the same things. Uh, you really did a great job. I thank you for coming out. I mean, and I know the mayor does and so forth. And let's all try and sit down and get this worked out. It'd be better for everyone. I mean, and, and, and the one firefighter, the, the lady that came up and said, that's an issue. I mean, I don't know where you're sitting anymore. Oh, there you are. Okay. That's an issue. Okay, and I think we recognize that issue. The problem is that how we fix it may be two different ways. I mean, and that's all we're asking you to be open to how we want to do it, and we're trying to listen. And I know the city manager, I've spoken to him a few times because I've gotten a few calls, and I, I know they're working hard on it, just as you're working hard on it. And I know sometimes frustration and emotion get involved. All I'm saying is ever on your team and is ever on our team, let's try and take the emotion and the frustration out. Let's try and work hard so we can get this resolved. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. I, I, I don't know anybody who could have said it better than Joe. I mean, um, Joe and I sat up here for over 23, four years now, and uh, we've gone through lots of these discussions um, with unions, um, with the with people coming in uh, wanting some things from the council. We've always, always been responsive uh, to our residents and to our employees. So just know that we do appreciate you extremely well. And uh, I have been a recipient of your, of your service. I'm alive today because of it. Uh, so we all feel it the same way. I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything. Joe, Joe did, did a great job. I appreciate it. I'm going to move on. To, uh, to uh, some other issues, um, you're more than welcome to stay uh, and, and listen. If you're not, uh, I will call a recess and give you time to, to, to leave. But if you're staying, I want you to stay for the whole meeting. Don't all get up at once because it's very, very difficult. Okay, I'm going to call a recess for five minutes. I have a few more cards uh, in uh, items by the public. I'd like to call their names. Is Commissioner Balache here? Yes. Yes, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's been probably a couple of months over the summer that I that I haven't been here, but I and I didn't want to disrupt the flow of your discussion. Um, but I have something very sad to report that you probably all know about, which is that my beloved, and not just beloved by me, but beloved by everybody who's ever dealt with her, uh, my assistant Cindy DiFilippo was killed in the beginning of June in an automobile accident in 
Savannah, Georgia. It's very hard. I'm sorry. Very hard for me to still talk about this. And in talking about, you know, fire rescue and paramedics, if she, if, as Joe said, if, if this had happened here, she'd still be alive. She didn't get the appropriate care. And, um, you know, those of you who've dealt with her, and I'm sure all of you have, um, you know, she was just a delight uh, to work with, always sunny, always pleasant, um, you know, consummate professional help me in a zillion ways that I, that I can't um, describe to you. So I, I just want to make sure that everybody, uh, I think you've all heard about this, but she deserves to be remembered and cherished, uh, you know, as somebody who did so much good for the north end of the county, for the entire county, and, you know, I miss her terribly. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Hal. Uh, you know, we all do. Uh, everyone in government knew Cindy. She was uh, one of the sweetest, kindest, nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, and she, she touched everybody's heart. Um, residents, government people, people she helped throughout the decades of service that she put into the county. Um, at the last meeting, we, we, we talked about her up here. We, we held a moment of silence for her, and we talked about her uh, very personally because, frankly, I think everybody up here knew her. And uh, I, mean, I, went, I went to the memorial service. It was a really difficult service. Commissioner Marcus, is she here? Yes. There she is. I know she worked for you for all those years, and she was beloved by everybody. So, she, God, she will be missed. She will be missed. Anytime there was a problem in the county, first person I'd call because that's the kind of person she was. She'd get it done. But she'd also get it done in the nicest way. I mean, that's, that's the kind of person she was, and she will be missed by me and I'm sure everybody else's life she touched. But thank you for saying that. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay. okay. It's hard to transition from one thing yeah. to another. I know that. That's right. Oh, um, all right, Dave, David Torrent, uh, uh, Tadros, Tadros, I'm sorry. David, are you here? No? Did he leave? Okay, David Tadros, all right. Suzanne McCarthy? No, they're not fired. Okay. Uh, Maria Schreiber? Yes. Are you here? Oh, good. Okay. Up to the microphone, and name and address for the record, please. My name is Maria Schreiber. I live at 441 Seaside Lane in Juneau Beach, and I am a member of the Palm Beach Gardens Tennis Center. I became more aware of the traffic problems in the area surrounding the Palm Beach Gardens Tennis Center after I got a $150 ticket for making an illegal right turn onto 117th Court from Central Boulevard. I had come down PGA and turned right onto Central. I saw the school drop-off line that extended south past the entrance to Bent Tree and thought, it makes no sense for me to get into that line. I'm not dropping off. I'm not even going to the school. So I went around the line, and that was my crime. More and more people are wanting to play at the tennis center. They're you turning to come in, getting stuck in the school line, or like me, committing a crime. Let's make it easy for them to park their cars in our new lot and play on our fabulous courts. The Tennis Center is a business. Let's make it easy for people to buy the wonderful experience it's selling. Let's learn from Joe Girard, the greatest salesman in the world, who didn't sell people cars. He just made it easy for them to buy one. I have a petition with 76 uh, signatures on it supporting a school zone free route to Palm Beach Gardens Tennis Center or additional lanes adding to existing routes. Shall I present this to you? Sure, to okay. the city clerk. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Uh, Justin Goldman. Is Justin here? Hi, Justin. 
Name and address for the record. No problem, sir. Justin Goldman, 4531 Mediterranean Circle here in Palm Beach Gardens. So I just wanted to address the, the, the board here about the expansion of the city parks over there by the tennis center. Uh, I'm with the soccer group for Palm Beach Gardens Soccer. My son's been playing in it for a few years now, um, pretty heavily involved. And we're, we're, we're appreciative to see that the park is expanding because we've seen rapid growth in soccer, lacrosse, and football. And with that congestion, we're seeing field space kind of shrink. So now this is going to give us that expansion to be able to play on it. What we're looking for is, uh, my son goes to Timber Trace, so we see the traffic issues that, that everybody else sees going to the tennis center or even to the schools itself. I understand that there's a proposal for possibly extending extension off of Shady Lakes area to give it an extension into Palm Beach Gardens or PGA Boulevard, which I think is a great idea, not just for the, the amenities of the fields itself, but I'm also thinking about the emergency service personnel being able to get in and out of the field space if there is a severe injury. Um, and I, everybody recalls in the summertime we had a forest fire. My kid had to get uh, evacuated out of summer camp there, and I'm just thinking, God forbid that happened during regular school time when we had both Duncan and Timber Trace in session, and everybody's trying to evacuate these students out and the safety hazards that creates. So I would love to be able to see that extension go. Um, I know that maybe some of the residents may not be happy with that, but if you look at the greater good for this cause, giving that additional outlet for that traffic flow is going to be very crucial for an emergency side of things and then also to kind of avoid, you know, people creating crimes by driving around lanes. But that's how I feel about that. So I just wanted to address that for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Uh, that's all the cards I have. Is there anyone else? Um, let me just say this about Shady Lakes Drive quickly, and then we'll move on. Um, you know, over the years, a lot of people have petitioned us um, to put that road through because of the concerns uh, of the two schools that are serviced through 117th Street. And um, uh, I have a petition in my hand that goes all the way back to 2008, uh, where a whole lot of residents and parents signed over almost 300 people signed this petition asking us to do that way back when. Um, frankly, um, there was no, uh, there was, there was a, a tennis center there, but City Park was in its, in its inference stages. Uh, and frankly, um, at that time, perhaps it wasn't absolutely dire and needed, but now it is. Uh, and frankly, Justin, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the idea that if that fire had happened uh, today when school was in session, uh, we'd have been hard-pressed to be able to evacuate all those kids from that school. There were, there's over, I don't know how many, but there's over 1,000 for sure. There were 50 there that day. We were able to evacuate them with no problem. But how many? 2,000 in each school. 4,000 children. 2,000 in both schools. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. All right. It, it, that's irrelevant. The point is, there are, is it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem that needs to be solved, uh, and it needs to be solved this year. So um, we've got another one. Okay. Randy Kerr? Yes. Want to? I just need your name and address for the record. Randy. Sure. Randy Kerr, 4008 Willow Run. Yes. Thank you guys very much for having me. Um, I wasn't expecting to speak tonight, but I have to do a little rebuttal. Um, okay. Basically, just a, I'm a resident of Shady Lakes. My house would be directly affected, as other residents would be. Um, my kids have gone to Timber Trace and to Duncan Middle School uh, since 2009. Um, I've lived in Shady Lakes. My kids go on the bike path every single day to school, open our back gate, no traffic, no concerns, walk them, walk my dog, see other people doing the same thing from Garden Lakes, um, the other development, sorry, I don't remember the name of it, but right right there, um, even kids from across the street, um, they even crossed PJ Boulevard to get there from the old PJ National um, area. So there are a big contingent of kids, and we feel it's a safety issue, just like when we did the park thing um, with the baseball stadium, we feel it's a safety issue. Um, I know there's a lot that goes into this. Um, we know it's on the books. So we're just kind of getting going on this, and I know it's going to be a hot topic among everybody. Um, I know, Mr. Levy, you're, you're dead set on this road, and you have been, and I appreciate your, uh, um, your candor and everything with that. So we just have a lot of concerns.
concern. If there are there is wildlife there, we will tell you we have seen a bald eagle. We do have a picture of it. Um, so there's got to be a lot of studies as far as traffic studies, environmental studies. Um, if you're going to make that road and you're, there's no turning lane coming off the PGA Boulevard, that's a no no easement lane to turn off on a road. It's going to be a huge tra um, huge traffic problem, even more, and a big safety issue. Turning on from PJ Boulevard at full speed, turning on to Shady Lakes Boulevard, and then going down that way. There's already space for 117th to be to be widened. We know that. You guys, I think the county, I think you guys own part of the easement on the north side of that road. If not, the county, the school board, I believe, may own it. So. It could be a quick claim deed. I'm just trying to throw things out there to give it to you guys. They don't want to maintain the road, and if you're going to maintain 117th, you might as well just maintain one road instead of two roads. Um, we know that Central will probably be sixth lane because the interchange is going in at 95, so that is probably going to be in your books a long way away, but it's probably going to be sixth lane to Central at some point when they're putting interchange at 95 and, and Central. I know it's down the, down the road a ways, but that's also going to help alleviate um, there is a way to do a big traffic circle at the entrance of the park and make it a nice big entrance to the park. Right now, there's a little sign. You can make a nice big entrance with a traffic circle. All the traffic would continue to flow right around that circle and right back out. So you come out of the school, instead of making left-hand turns out of each school and blocking the traffic, it's all continuous right-hand turn. There are all alternatives to do this. I think we need to look at the bigger picture. You are a park system. You guys say you're a, a county that, or a city that has 30% parks and recreation. We would love to see this go as a linear park with a jogging trail incorporated into the tennis center, into a fitness area, into a wellness area, and keep it like it is before with some green space. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Randy. I, I think we need to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think we need to mention one thing here about 117th Street. There are, the city has actually drawn plans to improve and two-lane and put traffic circles on 117th Street. Uh, when I was mayor back in 2011 or so, I was actually pushing that and got the concurrence from both the um, principals at Duncan and also the principal at um, Timber Trace. The problem is, is that right of way is owned by the school board and they will not release it to us. And we won't build a road on land that we don't own. So that's where our problem is, is that the school board is not letting us, and Ron, jump in at any time if I got anything wrong, but we can't build that road, but we have plans to build that road, and certainly that would be a huge help. But it doesn't alleviate the fact that there's only one way into those schools. And the only other way of getting it, as, you know, into that school is to complete Shady Lakes Drive, which if you do Holly Drive down Palm Beach Gardens, um, Elementary, Alamanda Drive, that road can be put in with wide sidewalks. It doesn't have to be a four-lane superhighway. It can have speed control. It can have all different types of things that will make it a safe road and actually a very desirable road to walk upon. If you go down and watch the kids go to Palm Beach Gardens Elementary, they're all walking down the sidewalks. You know, there's cross streets. There's crossing guards all the way there. It's a very safe, and i got to say it's a very family-oriented way of getting to school because Nothing makes me happier than watching parents walk their kids to school. It's a great time. It's a great bonding issue. So I think that we can put that road in and make it extremely safe. I think that we can work with the residents on this particular road, but make it safe for everybody in, the, in, this, in this city and give people another way of getting in. The other problem is I was just a couple of days ago, I was driving down Central going south. I saw the traffic backed up on Central making that right turn into one. 17th, it almost goes down to Bentry. It, the backup is, in, is absolutely incredible, and we're going to have to do something to solve that backup. So uh, I think that we can do this in a very intelligent way, working with our residents, that we can get, get a product that everybody is happy with. Thank you, David. Marcy? Just, just a, a few comments. I'm not going to go on about this subject. It's not something that's on our agenda. Um, it is something that is mentioned in our budget, and I know, um, Randy, you're absolutely right. It is something that is a controversial topic. I've received several emails in the last couple days in regards to this, um, but I do want to say that um, Justin made a very good point, and we did have a fire, and it was a very unsafe situation for those children, and thank goodness it wasn't during uh, normal school hours 
and uh, when both schools were uh, in full session. Um, because there is only one way in, one way out. And it, we have to do what's right for the children, but we also have to do what's right for the adjacent neighbors. So with that in mind, you know, David's absolutely right. 117th is something that we've tried to um, uh, fix. We've tried to, uh, to help alleviate the, the congestion on it. Uh, but unfortunately, it is a school-owned easement. It is not our road. It is something that we do not have control over. It is only governed by the school district. So we need to work cooperatively with the school district, um, and we need to work towards a resolution to this issue. And I can say clearly that we will definitely do this in a thoughtful manner. Um, there are a lot of rumors going on out there. It is not going to be a major thoroughfare um, in that neighborhood. I can guarantee you that. It will be a very, um, if it's approved, it will be a very nice residential um, roadway that is done in a very thoughtful manner, um, in designed with safety at, as our utmost concern, especially because we know that there are children. I am a mom that has driven and walked my child to school for um, her entire uh, life so far. <laughs> and um, I can tell you, I've walked, I would not uh, allow her to uh, walk in an unsafe situation, and I wouldn't expect anyone to do that. So we will definitely make sure that this is designed in a very thoughtful manner for all parties involved. Randy, just real quick, as, as, as you said David was always 100% for it, I was always 100% against it, okay? And because of the safety of the children you just you just stated. Now when you look at it, and the only reason I'm willing to look at this again is because of the event that we just had and we had the safety of 2,000 children to worry about. And that's really what I think we're trying to accomplish here. And like I say, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to be for it because I've been 100% against it, but I'm willing to look at it now because of the safety issue of all the kids in that school. So, But again, we'll be having a lot of discussions. You don't, you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning and see that road going in. You know, we have a lot to do to make sure it's done right, if it's done. Okay. I think we've uh, discussed this uh, fully, so let's move on with the agenda. Um, Next is a consent agenda. Move consent. Move and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Okay. Uh, public hearings. I don't have any quasi judicials. Nothing's quasi? Okay. <gasps> no quasi. That's what I was looking for. No quasi. No quasi. Got it. Okay, Ordinance 12, 2015. First reading, adopting fiscal year budget 2015 2016. Alan? Oh, Ordinance 12, read the title first. Sorry. Ordinance 12, 2015, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, adopting the budget for the City of Palm Beach Gardens for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2015, and ending September 30, 2016, providing a conflicts clause and a severability clause, providing an effective date for the purposes. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Alan Owens, for the record, Finance Administrator. Um, this is Ordinance 12, 2015, which is the first reading of the budget adoption for fiscal year 2015-2016. Just like to start out with giving everybody an idea of where we are in the budget process this year, starting with July 1st, which was the date that the council set the maximum operating millage at that date. Uh, the maximum millage was set at 5.67, and we'll talk a little bit more about the proposed millage in a couple of minutes here. Since that date, the proposed line item budget has been issued and has been posted on the website on August 12th. Uh, also, our budget oversight committee, who we'll hear from a little bit later on in the presentation, have been meeting regularly and finalized their report, uh, signed it, and has been posted and on the website since August 31st. Of, 2015 and that brings us to tonight the first public hearing required by state statutes and our second final hearing is scheduled for a week from tonight just like to start out with some of the good news as far as the continuation of what the economic recovery this is the fourth year that we've seen 
an increase in the total valuation of the city. Uh, our total value next year is up about 7.8%. Uh, that is uh, down, though, still from our total high of $9.9 billion in 2008. Uh, next year's total value is about $9.4 billion. That does include $132 million of new construction. Uh, as far as the proposed operating rate for next year, um, at the last meeting in July, Council made it clear that they'd like staff to come back and look hard at reducing the millage. One of the reasons that we had recommended setting the millage at the 5.67, there were some unknowns. Uh, primarily, the stormwater analysis report that was not completed as of that date. Uh, so we wanted to leave a little bit of room, a little bit of flexibility. Uh, since that time, the report has been done. Uh, we'll get into the uh, results of the report a little bit later, too. But that we have the numbers that plugged into our budget for next year. It allowed us to take a look at lowering that mill operating millage rate by 12 cents, down to 5.55. Uh, so what we'd like to do on this chart is just compare the effect of going to the 5.55 compared to the 5.67 rate. As you can see, uh, if we maintain the rate at 5.67, our reserves would be projected to increase almost $5 million during the five-year forecast period from 26.3 to 31.1 million. If you look at a homesteaded property with a $300,000 taxable amount, uh, they would see at that rate a $9 increase in their city taxes. A non-homesteaded property would see an increase of $99. Uh, by going to the recommended rate of 5.55, which is about a 2.1% reduction, uh, reserves, as you can see, stay flat throughout the five-year forecast period at about $25.2 million. This particular homesteaded property would see a decrease in their city tax uh, of $27. And this uh, particular non-homesteaded property would see an increase of $61. Just would like to point out that as far as the non-homesteaded properties, that's assuming that that property increased the average citywide, which is about 6%. That varies greatly. I know there are some properties in, in my neighborhood that have actually gone down a little bit last year. So uh, for those, in those cases, a non-homesteaded property would actually see uh, a further reduction in their taxes. So just to summarize the proposed millage rate, again, we're proposing an operating rate of 5.55 down from 5.67. The debt millage is actually down uh, percentage-wise about 15%, down to 0.1371. Uh, it's down percentage-wise so much because we actually are paying off this year the Series 2000 general obligation bond um, <clears throat> series that was outstanding. So the proposed combined rate is 5.6871. Uh, that's a 2.5% reduction from the current year rate. And uh, what this slide shows is it uh, answers one of the questions you, a lot of people ask is how much of our total taxes goes to the city. Well, right now it's about 27 cents of every dollar that's paid goes to the city. The remaining almost three-fourths of that dollar goes to uh, other agencies like the county, the school board, um, other special taxing districts. And then we'd like to talk a little bit about some of the major factors that go into the development of the budget every year, the same factors. You have to deal with our capital cost, our operating cost factors, and the biggest uh, factor or driver of the budget, as always, are our personnel cost, which in the general fund account for about 67% of the total expenditures. So we'd like to start out with personnel cost. Our total personnel cost next year for all funds, and that includes salary, FICA, retirement, health insurance, life insurance, and workers' compensation insurance. The total for all funds is up about 1.5 million, or 2.5%. Uh, pensions, we are, uh, in next year's budget, providing full funding per the actuary's reports. Our total uh, contributions next year for the police, fire, and for the FRS, for the general employees, is about 7,282,000. That's up slightly from 7,241,000. Uh, the total full-time positions uh, recommended next year is 470. Uh, it is an increase of 10 full-time positions. Um, however, I'd like to point out, of those 10, five of those are existing uh, personnel that are part-time, uh, and three of those are really at the uh, Youth Enrichment Center. They're being recommended to go to full-time due to the mandate of the Affordable Care Act, where 
Uh, they have to, they, because of the scheduling and operational considerations, they have to work more than uh, the 28 hours a week that we've mandated for other part-time positions. Uh, in addition, there are a few positions that were eliminated during the recession that we would like to restore. There are two operations manager positions, a police captain and an admin specialist three. So out of the 10, there's really only one new, entirely new position, a co-compliance officer three position. Uh, moving on to operating costs, as far as repairs and maintenance, some of the significant items, their additional cost for as you know, last year and the current year, actually, we started a, an intensive uh, five-year uh, schedule addressing major repair and maintenance items. Um, next year, we are uh, recommending to continue that program with uh, 334000 for roof repair and maintenance, painting, both interior and exterior of buildings, bathroom and plumbing repairs, about 215000 for resurfacing of various parking lots throughout the city, at the tennis court facilities, uh, repaving of some older courts, the 200000 and $95,000 for canal long line mowing. And as far as the biggest uh, new item, the stormwater renovations that I mentioned earlier, we did receive the report. Uh, the report indicated that we needed to fund and address about $1.4 million of re renovations and refurbishment in next year's budget and thereafter and for a 10-year period, budget around 400000 for ongoing maintenance. So what we're able to do is uh, factor in $1.5 million in next year's budget and $500,000 uh, in our five-year forecast, uh, a little bit extra to cover the contingencies and unforeseen uh, things that you are bound to run into. Um, just a couple slides here that show that some of the numbers are all funds total budget. Um, expenditures and reserves total about 137 million. You can see the biggest part is uh, personnel about 62 million. You can see the operating capital and the largest, uh, next largest portion are the all fund reserves of about 35.6 million, and that is balanced on for the revenues of 137 million. Uh, again, the, obviously, I think the uh, biggest, uh, no surprise, the largest single source of revenue is ad valorem at about 51 million. And then the next largest source of funding are the projected carryover fund balances for all funds of about $39.7 million. Uh, moving on down to the general fund, the total budget is about $105 million. On the expense side, again, you can see personnel and followed by the operating capital debt. Uh, reserves total about $27.4 million in next year's general fund budget. On the expenditure side, um, I mean, I'm sorry, revenue side, you can see ad valorem revenue, again, 51 million. Projected carryover fund balance of about 29.9 million. And when you look at the changes in the revenues and expenses for next year's general fund budget, on the left side, you can see the changes in ad valorem, the increase in ad valorem, the increase in other revenues. If you exclude those types of revenues that are non recurring, uh, beginning balance and transfers, revenues in total are up about 5.2%. On the expenditure side, you can see the increase in personnel cost up from 49 to 50 million, operating cost increase. And again, if you exclude the non-recurring items such as reserves and transfers, expenditures are up about 4.2%. Um, some of the other things we like to point out every year, general fund highlights, uh, again, as you know, council, uh, we do not charge uh, for residential uh, curbside garbage or trash collection. Uh, we don't charge an electric, water, or natural gas utility tax, which can be up to 10%. In most cities, I would say, in the county are up close to 10%. Uh, we do not charge a city stormwater assessment. We pay for that, again, out of our ad valorem revenues. Nor do we charge a city fire assessment fee, which a lot of cities are starting to go to these days. So the significance of that is, again, as we do every year, uh, we like to factor in uh, and compare ourselves with some other neighboring cities and other cities similar size, uh, taking into account not just ad valorem tax rate for the city, but the total fee structure, taking into account some of those items that I just mentioned. And in doing so, using these assumptions here, a $325,000 homesteaded property uh, to calculate utility tax, you can see the assumptions we use for electric, water, and gas. And to calculate the communication service tax, you can see the assumptions we used for phone and cable TV charges. 
So taking into account all of those assumptions, you can see that how we stack up compared to uh, these cities here. You can see the city portion, the ad valorem tax, and then just go across the board, the other ad valorem, which would be all the other uh, taxing districts. Um, you can see the uh, utility tax, communication tax, solid waste, stormwater, fire assessment for a total of about $6,051. The other cities, again, you can just not going to go through every single number, but again, when you add in all the other uh, costs, in particular the other ad valorem tax for some cities that are members of the Palm Beach County Fire Rescue MSTU, you can see that they have a very low city ad valorem tax, but when you add in the other taxes, uh, you can see like Royal Palm Beach, $1,000 more in other ad valorem than we pay here in the city. When you add in the other things, utility taxes and so on and so forth, uh, you can see the purpose of this slide is to just give a kind of comparison, a gauge of how we stack up with other cities. And uh, we think that shows we have a very favorable tax and fee structure looking at a total cost. Uh, just uh, going on through some of the other funds, special revenue funds, we have a gas tax special revenue fund, uh, projected revenue is about 790000 uh, The expense side can, includes the ongoing recurring side, street sidewalk repair program that we do every year. It also, uh, we pay for street lighting out of this fund. The golf special revenue fund, you can see projected uh, revenues are about 20000 more than projected expenses. Uh, we have another special revenue fund, our recreation program special revenue fund. Uh, revenues are pretty much balanced with expenses, and uh, this fund actually is built up uh, in next year's budget an estimated reserve of almost $780,000. Uh, we have a couple of internal service funds. One, the first one is our fleet maintenance fund. Um, you, again, you can see the charges to other departments here, revenues of $2.6 million. Um, pretty much balanced with expenses, and you can see the big ticket item there are annual vehicle replacements of about $500,000. Uh, the other uh, internal service fund that we have is our self-insured health fund, um, and you can see the revenues balanced with expenses. Uh, the biggest takeaway here I'd like to point out is that this is the second year in a row uh, with no increase in medical rates, and even with that, uh, we still have built up a very adequate uh, reserve of close to six million in that fund. Uh, impact funds are capital project funds. You can see the total projected revenue for all of those funds is about 2.8 million in capital outlay, the one significant project of about 2.5 million next year. Um, every year we do a five-year forecast. Um, some of the highlights from that forecast, um, the Plan keeps our operating rate flat at 5.55 through fiscal year 2020. Debt millage rate goes down to zero in 2020. That's because all of our general obligation debt will be paid off in fiscal year 2019. Our unassigned fund balance uh, maintains flat at 23.1 and our budget stabilization fund stays flat throughout the projection at 2.1 million. Uh, so at this time, I would like to introduce the chairman of our Budget Oversight Committee, Dr. Mark Marciano, I think, is in the audience, and he's going to come up and give the council and the public a brief overview of the highlights of the committee's report that was issued and posted August 31st. Mark. Hello, council. Uh, for the record, Mark Marciano, 10 Sheldrake Lane. Um, the rest of our committee, minus one, is sitting over there. Uh, we have uh, four marks and a dentist on our committee. We have three marks and a dentist here tonight. And uh, I, I, first I want to thank the council and previous councils for actually um, creating uh, these oversight committees for budget and parks and rec and everything else. It does allow hopefully the residents of the city to feel confident in, in knowing what's happening with the city. Uh, and in terms of the budget side, uh, I've been on this committee for four years, chair for two, and I have to say this year um, our, our committee was, was very um, Active, uh, lots of questions. Uh, Councilman Premarso was there with us for most of the meetings, and uh, it was a very uh, lively set of discussions uh, throughout the throughout the year. We've had well, we have an accountant, we have a banker, we have a, an engineer, we have a member of the Northern uh, District, and and then just little me who doesn't know much about numbers <laughs> compared to those folks. And um, 
they really were able to pick apart the budget, and it was quite interesting to see the questions come through. Not just line items. Um, we all kind of question line items, you know, where this particular dollar goes and that particular dollar goes. And the budget is pretty daunting when you try to look at it. But uh, at one point, one of our members asked 41 questions of our uh, city finance, 42 questions. Um, and, and I have to say that with that, uh, both Alan and Mary were, were very quick at responding. So I don't know what else is on your job duties, but they did a really nice job in answering the questions honestly and open um, and, and answer the questions in a forthright way. So I think you, you know, we all hear how wonderful staff is and, you know, some of us kind of yawn when we hear it, but really they did a great job and I want to thank them for that. Uh, in regards to the budget committee, we really wanted to pay attention to the 2016 budget, not so much for the 2015 budget. I know there's been a lot of talk in the city about some of the capital improvement projects for the uh, the golf course was a big one, of course, and the police uh, facility and, and uh, city park and, and the pension funding. Uh, those things we did discuss, and of course, we were all glad that, that we could do that. Uh, in terms of future capital improvement projects, I think the big one we were all waiting for was the, the storm drainage improvements of the $1.4 million. Uh, we've learned, I've learned over the years that the city is always very uh, cautious and, and um, uh, they like to be a little more careful and in, in, in un, not underfunding but overfunding these projects. We think this is smart. So supporting a $1.5 million investment for storage drainage, drainage improvements for all areas that are not part of northern improvement was uh, obviously a, a, a safety issue for the city, for everybody, even if you're not within directly living within the, uh, if, in, in the city part where these, uh, where these storage drainage improvements will occur. Uh, and, of course, $500,000 annually thereafter seems a uh, pretty nominal and pretty smart. Um, ideally, we nobody wants to see the um, budget reserve fund drop below the $23.5 million, and even though that's a lot more than 17%, uh, given where we are in the, and who knows if FEMA would be available for us in the future, those funds should be available. Um, at the end of this year, we understand the, uh, the budget stabilization fund will have a balance of around $400,000. We do like to see that a little higher. Um, at that, at, to the 2.1 up to 2.4 million dollars going forward, that allows the city some, some flexibility for some projects that I'm sure are in the works, uh, and also to give the city some flexibility going forward. One of the most common themes of our discussions was to try to avoid a yo-yo effect on the millage. We didn't want to see it drop too low and then find out we have to raise it. And even though we all feel pretty confident that the future of the city financially is going to continue to grow that valuations will continue to grow, expenses will continue to grow. We heard some stories from the firefighters today, and, and that's something that I'm sure the city is looking at going forward. Um, so we didn't want to drop it too low. We thought 5.55, based on the recommendation for the city, seemed like a fair number. It does provide every resident that owns property in the city a, a pretty substantial decrease in taxes, which is good. Um, we did feel that uh, last year, of course, there was uh, a slight reduction in millage, which still allowed the city to enjoy pretty robust revenues and, and um, uh, excess dollars in the, in the accounts that allowed for these capital improvement projects. So lowering the millage may be an option, um, but again, we didn't want to see uh, it, it get too low and then have to find out that things may have to raise in the future for un unknown reasons. And in lowering it to 5.55, even if there is excess funds available, we feel that there is probably a likelihood that the continued lowering of millage may be a, a strong option going forward. So in summary, we, we, uh, we felt pretty confident, pretty good about where the city is at. We thank the city and, and um, uh, Council Member Primoroso for his help. And a real uh, strong thank you for Alan and Mary for you know, putting up with us this year. So if there's any questions for us, we're all here. And thank you to our committee. Uh, they did a great job. So thanks. Thank you, Mark. Mark. Uh, f first, before we do this, I've got to open the public hearing because I didn't do that before. And before I ask for any public comment, uh, Joe, you want yeah, to say Mark, I, I, let me just say this to you. I asked the council many years ago when I was the mayor to form this budget oversight committee. But, you know, and they all approved, and that's the easy part. The committee is only as good as the people that serve on it. And the quality that we've had over the years on this committee has just been phenomenal. I want to thank all of you. I mean, the, the, this report, the amount of time you spend, and Bert, I used to be the liaison. Bert is now the liaison. I mean, you guys just do a great job. Yes, the difficult questions of staff, and it's all about transparency today. And this is a board that's completely transparent, has nothing to do with the council. You don't get direction from the council. You get there, you ask the questions, 
And this is something I think the residents feel a little, little better about. But this committee would be nothing if it wasn't for the quality of the individuals on it. And for that, on behalf of the residents, I thank you. You've done a great well, job. You. And I'd encourage anybody to come out to the meetings or <clears throat> join the committee or be a part of the committee in the future because uh, it's a great way to learn a little bit about city yeah, government. Your schedule is on the, on the website. Everyone can see it. We're very transparent when it comes to our budget. Uh, you meet every month. And, Bert, you do a great job. Thank you for the words you said, Joe, because it's, I think we all feel that way up here. Yeah, I think, a great job. I think Alan was wondering if we could add two or three more members and 100 more questions to the committee, <laughs> which would get a little more exciting. Uh, <laughs> but, no, Mark, uh, obviously you, the Marks, and Dennis, um, you know, just inquisitive, wanting to know what's going on, trying to learn light items down to a specific dollar, which, again, for staff, um, it might be cumbersome, but they're going to do their job and get you the answers. You're going to be transparent in the issues and, and, and get what you need uh, to understand what we're doing. And um, this year was uh, a fun budget because it was probably one of the better ones to work on with the revenue growth and, and, and being able to reduce the millage and do some capital projects. So I thank you guys uh, for your efforts, and uh, I look forward to next year and, and, and see what it holds and, and what questions come up next year, which should be, uh, should be fun. Well, guys, our job is done until next year, so thank yeah. you. See you in March. Uh, this is a public hearing, so I have no cards on the subject, but if anyone will is, is, wants to comment, please. We, um, I just had a couple oh. more. Just, oh, okay. I thought you were uh, Just real quick, just, um, uh, just a quick summary. I think it's all, everything's already been said, but um, the budget next year does uh, provide a spending plan to accomplish the following, the uh, million and a half for the stormwater renovation repairs. Um, a significant investment infrastructure, almost $9.9 .9 million next year. It does provide full funding for PBA, SEIU. Uh, we do have a proposed uh, funding for the IAFF contract and adjustments for non-union employees at 3 percent, the same as SEIU, and all this with a 2.5 percent reduction in the overall tax rate. Uh, so with that, Mr. Mayor, uh, the required action, you can see that before you. Uh, staff does recommend a motion that the city of Palm Beach Gardens adopts a proposed operating rate of 5.55 mills and a debt millage rate of 0.1371 for a total rate of 5.6871 uh, for 2015-16, which exceeds rollback rate of 5.3354 by 4%. And we do recommend a motion to approve Ordinance 12 on first reading, setting the date and time for the second final hearing that's on September 17, uh, 2015 at 7 p.m. Thank you, that Alan. Concludes. And before we do that, <laughs> I need to take comments from the public. If I see none, I will close the public hearing. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing, bring it up here for any comments and or a resolution. Yeah. Um, Alan, we're spending a lot of money on stormwater drainage, but I think the opposite side of that is if we don't spend money on stormwater drainage, it could cause flooding in our city, which would cost a heck of a lot more our residents a heck of a lot more than 1.4 or 1.5 million dollars. So, you know, I know that we went through and we scheduled that report and we're about the only city in the state of Florida that has advanced this part of our NPDES program to this level and have gone to this level of detail to ensure that flooding doesn't occur, which um, I guess you all remember when we flooded in 1999. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I lived in a neighborhood that actually flooded, so uh, the cost to our residents of that flooding was quite a lot. So I would like to uh, both commend the financial group but also the engineering group uh, that went ahead and bird dogged this program and uh, tell you I, I do appreciate it. I personally have said that I thought this was a pretty solid budget, and I do believe that staff has done a great job. I believe that the Budget Oversight Committee, um, which, uh, you know, having those different eyes looking at it, confirming what you're thinking, you know, independently is really a, a big help uh, to me personally uh, because, you know, this is, it is a big document and knowing that other people are looking through it uh, and my fellow council members are looking through it, you know, and it, with all those eyes on it and then all the eyes of the public being able to look at it, uh, I think we've got ourselves one of the best budgets I think we've ever had. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like is when I was mayor, we were in the other situation where we were having <laughs> the raised military rates and everything else. Why did you guys stick me with that? <laughs> okay. 
sucker. <laughs> it was the it was the economy, not it was the economy. It wasn't you, David. It wasn't you. Right, don't take it personally. Any other comment? Sure. I do have a few, so bear with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, first and foremost, there's one thing that is certain, and that's uh, we've always been fiscally responsible, and thanks to Alan and his team, um, we're in great financial shape. Um, and we did have a, the last, well, since I've been on the council, it, when I was first elected, it was a recession, and we've come a long way, that's for sure. It was very tough um, going through the last, you know, four years. Um, we're obviously, since then, seeing an, uh, our economy getting stronger, and um, at our July hearing, uh, I requested, and I know a lot of our council member, my colleagues here on the council agreed, uh, we wanted to give our taxpayers um, a reduction in the millage, and I want to thank our staff for doing just that. Um, I support the proposed reduction and note that um, it's also projected to be reduced um, from the proposed 5.687 to 5.55 in the next five years, and I thank you for um, projecting that. Uh, as an aside, I looked at our budget um, from 2011 when I was a first first year of me being on the council and our projected millage rate for 2016 was 5.894. So great job. Um, further, in preparation of our budget hearing, and I said this during our staff review, I did a little online research um, into other municipalities, um, but in their budgets actually. And I'm going to admit I'm a little biased to Palm Beach Gardens, um, but I tried to be as subjective as possible when I reviewed the other budgets. And I have, I could say that I found ours is the most uh, comprehensive and the most transparent uh, budget that I could find. Um, our residents asked for transparency, and Alan and his team gave them just that. You guys delivered by far. It's a line by line, department by department, itemized budget that um, way exceeds best practices. I also want to thank our budget committee. I know you spent a lot of time um, independently looking through it and providing your uh, numerous comments, 42, I guess, <laughs> at the last one. Um, you guys did a very diligent job, and I thank you. Um, a few additional comments. Our staff, um, rightly so, takes a very conservative look and approach and uses uh, conservative projections, um, which is what they should be doing and I support keeping our unassigned uh, reserves a bit higher than our benchmark of the 17%. All it takes is one um, bad storm or an unexpected event similar to what Joe was saying, and uh, we uh, might need a cushion. So the, um, what we have in place is definitely a must in my book. Um, and last, Alan and your team, uh, congratulations for a job well done and for your Distinguished Budget Presentation Award and your Certificate of Achie Achievement of Excellence in Finance Reporting, you certainly deserve it. Great. Thank you. You guys, Joe? Yeah. I, I, I want to know if they're going to get another award for the presentation of the graphics. The graphics well, it gets better I mean, and I mean, better I mean, every year. It may not be as good as Don Herring. If you get those numbers to bounce a little get bit, those and, then, bounce a little bit and the glasses around your neck, then I think we might be giving it to you. But anyway. Um, just, just a couple of comments. Alan, you alluded to the three additional um, for the, the, the part-time workers at Riverside, and then now they're going to become full-time. Um, and in my discussion with you, I've real, I, you know, you've said, I think Jack Downey said that we've raised the rates to compensate for that. And the reason for that is they have to be full-time because of Obamacare, the Health Care Act, and so forth. But basically, it's revenue neutral. Um, as many of you know, this will be my last budget that I vote on, and um, I, I think that we're adding um, employees, which we needed to do because it's been a long time since. I just hope that next year that you're not establishing a pattern of, of, of adding more employees. These are well needed and so forth, and, and the revenues continue to grow, although our evaluation is not what it had been before. You know, our evaluation still hasn't gotten to what, to the top of where we were at. Right, Alan? Am I correct on that? But we still made excellent progress. Um, you know, this is a budget that, again, I'm proud of. I'm, I'm, I want to thank staff, thank the city manager for bringing us a budget. We gave him the direction to lower the millage. Um, this uh, amounts to a reduction. Hopefully the reduction is enough in our city so that they don't have to be paying more for the rest of the governments that they have to fund. 
Uh, but this is a good budget. I want to thank everybody, and uh, I'm proud to vote for this budget. And it'll be the last one I vote for. You can come back and uh, do the other think ones so. if you want. I don't think so. You can join the budget oversight. We can get rid of one of the marks and throw you on there. Nope. You've got to replace a mark with a mark. <laughs> Draw straws for the marks. I was going to suggest that, Joe, but mm. I'm saying no. Maybe we can switch your arm next year. Let's see. Well, I think you've heard it all. Um, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, city well, manager. You skipped over me. The entire staff. You said what you wanted to say. No, I'm ready. I got my little oh, notes. Yeah, sure. I got my little notes. I just want to say it real quick. Just in summary, in summary, I'm not going to get all crazy, but all right. um, I get to speak, right, yep. for my people, Absolutely. for my Marks and my Dennis out there. I appreciate it. Dennis and the Marks. Dennis and the Marks. Um, this is a really a spectacular budget. I mean, if I were to look at this a year ago and say I want this, 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 and this, and I probably did write down some things a year ago of what I wanted in this budget, I, I think you've surpassed all of my expectations. And I try to think of it as representing the residents on how I look at this budget and some of the things that they might want and some of the things that we might not, that we have to do that we hadn't done in the past years because of the recession and the downturn. So I look at the, the spending and capital improvements, uh, obviously the stormwater being the big one for the established older neighborhoods in our city, which we don't want to have crumble and, and design flaws happening beneath our streets, uh, which would raise those costs significantly and would maybe lead to a stormwater assessment. Uh, which is not going to happen now. Um, I look at the budget stabilization fund being funded back up to $2 million. Uh, I had concerns about that four or five months ago. We decided to do all those passing of the, the spending of the other items, the police uh, station, the, the golf course, the pension stuff, city park, uh, and we almost basically eliminated that to zero. I was not comfortable with that. I think we needed to have a side fund. Uh, that $2 million can certainly subsidize some other categories if revenues don't materialize as we're budgeting. So to me, that's very important not to look at the big reserve fund of $23 million, but to leave that there and have additional monies elsewhere if we need to cover something. The lower millage rate for the second year in a row, I'm not seeing that written in the paper too often from other municipalities in our county that are doing that. Um, staff, thank you for your efforts last year to reduce the millage rate. I know I had made some comments about um, underestimating, uh, underestimating revenues and overestimating expenses a little bit, and that did materialize. But you were, you, you fought the battle to lower the millage rate last year, and we've asked you to do it again this year, and you've doubled it. And the 12 basis points was the number that I was kind of looking at, and I think it worked out perfect. So thank you for those efforts as well. Again, during the recession, we upgraded our bond ratings to AAA for all agencies, and we incurred no more general obligation debt. So in four years, those bonds will be gone and will be in line with Juno Beach and North Palm, which they do talk about that a lot, how they have no bond debt, no millage rate debt. Those are smaller municipalities that's understandable on how they operate. For us being a large growing city to have no geo debt in four years, if that materializes, that is phenomenal. So I'm very proud uh, to mention that. In terms of staffing levels, I think now that we're growing again, um, our service levels need to be increased a little bit. So we do need to increase staffing to meet those levels. Um, we are now an over 50,000 population city. People don't realize that. They think we're still a smaller bedroom community at times. But we are over 50,000 residents now. So there's a responsibility to staff and make sure we take care of those residents for the services they demand for our city. And I'd also like to thank staff. This kind of goes quietly under the radar for the potential funding of the IG if that gets settled next year. If we're on the losing end, we're on the losing end. I know, Joe, that was a big issue for you. That is in the budget for next year. The thing about this budget, there's no surprises. I cannot stand surprises when you bring those to me and you have not done that. Uh, I think since maybe since the beginning I've been on this council and I respect you guys for that. I appreciate that. And I think this budget is gonna be one of the best that we've seen, if not the best, as David had mentioned, uh, that we've done. So I'm looking forward to next year's budget. I'm already excited to get going on that. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of good things next year that we can do. Uh, but for now, you've met all my, ex all my expectations, and I hope the residents appreciate your efforts and what's being done for the next year. Thank you. Okay, well said. Alan, you've done a great job. Mary, your whole staff, city manager, I won't say any more. I think my colleagues have said it all. This is probably one of the best budgets, if not the best budget, that we've ever passed on this council, and I hope for uh, more of the same in the future. With that, I'll, I'll obtain a resolution. Yeah, before I make this motion, Marcy brought up a very good point, which is the military rate when you started. The military rate when I started, my first budget was a little over six. 
So that's where we've come in 11 years. We've actually lowered it well below the. Uh, you know, the funny part is, is that a lot of people have always said the more you grow, the city wise, the more you grow, the more your 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 rate's going to go up. You would think. And and and, and right. what happened was our our rate rapidly went up at the time because our growth was so quick and we had to staff everything to deal with the growth. But now that the growth has subsided or whatever. We have enough. We got more revenue than what we used to have, and, and less in expenses per, let's say, per millage rate. It's unbelievable. It's oh, with that, I'm going to make a motion that the C of Palm Beach Gardens adopt a proposed operating millage rate of 5.55 mills, a debt millage rate of 0 0.1371, for a total rate of 5.6871 mills for fiscal year 2000. 2015-2016, which exceeds the rollback rate of 5.3354 by 4 percent. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will also make a motion to approve Ordinance 12, 2015, on first reading, adopting a tentative budget for fiscal year 2015-2016 and setting the second and final reading for September 17, 2015, at 7 o'clock p.m. in this council chambers. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass is 5-0. Well, we're at the end. Uh, Ron, you did a great job. This is your budget. You listened to this council and you delivered a phenomenal uh, document. Can't thank you enough for your leadership. You did a great job. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. May I make a comment, please? Sure. Um, it, it is a great budget and it's, it's a lot of hard work went into it. And Alan, Mary, and, and the committee deserve all the credit they can get. Uh, it's a team effort. And every one of these department heads and division heads and members of the staff understand the importance of budget, keeping taxes low, operating as efficiently and effectively as they can. Very proud of them. We're like the only city you'll find that operates $3.7 million recreation department by fees collected and people get paid out of that, uh, out of that type of uh, funding, that special recreation fund. We do things like that all the time. And, and that type of uh, commitment from our staff members is, is based upon their commitment to provide the services this city needs. And they are the ones that came up with the original budget. They are the ones that tightened the belt. They are the ones that come up with the creative ideas and the innovative ideas that bring forward ways that we can do things better, more often, cheaper, and different ways that we can approach things. So. I would just like to recognize all of those employees out there that do the great job in creating this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you. Um, next is um, items for council action. Any? Seeing none, city attorney report. Seeing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. But before I do, I want to remind everybody the Green Market opens October 4th, outside right here. Thank you very much. Motion for adjournment. Second. Mo move and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.